Hello, it's Brian from Osmo Tips. So this is a video that we're customizing for people who've downloaded this LUT so that you get the most out of it. The first thing is I wanna just go over briefly some recommended DJI Osmo video settings that make sure that this LUT and future LUTs that we're gonna create for you will work perfectly with your footage. Secondly, I'm gonna just touch over again, just applying the LUT if you haven't already seen the video that covers this. And then lastly, we'll look at how to tweak the LUT appearance. So let's start off with video settings. So the first thing you wanna make sure you've done is um, when you go to the DJI Go app, click the little gear icon that is on the bottom right hand and this will take it to the screen. When you're on this screen, click the camera icon and then I recommend that you choose the video standard NTSC. It's typically a standard that's used in North America and Canada, but there's nothing to stop you from using it from wherever you are in the world. And the reason why I recommend this is, first of all, you're able to shoot in 4K, but more importantly, this is the only video standard that allows you to shoot at 30 frames per second. What basically this means is you get a much higher resolution. In fact, this is the highest resolution that you can get on the DJI Osmo camera. Whereas with PAL, for example, you can only go as high as 25 frames per second. So with that said, next thing you wanna make sure you select 4K, obviously. The next thing you wanna choose to shoot in manual mode. So next you want to select your ISO and shutter speed settings. So for both of these, we recommend you go as low as you can on ISO, so ISO 100. And with shutter speed, shutter speed, the setting that is normally recommended is it needs to be twice the amount of your frames per second. So in the previous setting, remember we chose 30 frames per second. So twice that, that's 60. Have a look at the histogram, make sure that none of this, which no part of this graph is, is going to the either extreme left or extreme right, which will mean you've either blown your highlights or you've, you've crushed your blacks, which means you know, you're know you losing detail. Now, if with these settings, you find that your image is well overexposed, what this means is you need to use an ND filter with your DJI Osmo camera. And an ND filter is basically like a pair of shades for your camera. But this is a subject that we'll cover completely in a separate video. The next is you want to select the D-Log under your color profile. And the reason is the D-Log profile gives you a very shallow image, which allows you to grade this um, color better in in your video editing software so it preserves all the detail in your shadows details in your highlights details in the blacks and so on so you, it gives you enough flexibility to color grade as much as possible then next you want to go to style and in style we recommend you choose custom because then you can reduce sharpness minus two saturation minus two contrast minus three. The last thing is just make sure that your histogram is turned on because this always indicates the kind of exposure that you're getting. So always try and aim for a shape that's kind of like within these three lines here. So that's where your graph should be. Don't worry about the science of physics behind what's being shown here. But basically you want to avoid the shape of your graph touching these two edges. Okay, so if you're not seeing this, probably means your histogram is off in which case you just slide it to turn it on and with that you're ready to shoot okay so we're back from filming we've got this footage which is in d-log i'm currently using adobe premiere pro cc 2015 and you'll find a lot of my editing is done in this software is because that's the one that i'm most familiar with I, I enjoy using it because it's quite versatile and it's always evolving but by no means are you inclined to use this there's so many video editing software out there and the principles of what i show you are pretty much the same with most editing software so let's go right ahead and um, apply the royal punch lat to this d-log footage if you don't already have the lat feel free to head on over to our website osmotips.com and download your free color grading lat so the first thing as always, we create an adjustment layer. Okay, so I'm gonna bring that down to the editing timeline, drag that across. And as, as we know, 
our LUT is applied through the Lumetric color effect. So I've got that searched here in the effects panel. I'm gonna drag it over to the adjustment layer. And then in the second panel is where we apply the LUT. So I'm just gonna twirl that down. In look, which is the same as input LUT, click that, then click browse. Then locate the folder that you've unzipped the Royal Punch file that you got from the from the website click the royal punch click open and voila the lat has been applied but hang on something doesn't look right here okay first of all these houses look way too exposed the sky looks blown out as well there's some funky colors going on here and the water is too blue too saturated so what can we do couple of things we can do first of all when you apply a lot you're applying it at 100% of its intended power in this case this lot was specifically designed to add punch hence the name royal punch so we can firstly try and reduce the intensity and this is really a trial and error kind of thing so um, let's, let's just stop at 78 because I see there's already been some positive change here uh, the water is starting to look like it's supposed to um, but we still have a problem with these buildings here especially this one here it's really blown out so this points out to exposure so the next thing we want to do is we want to come over to basic correction because under basic correction is where you find additional controls and these controls are happening before this layer where we've applied the light so that's the recommended way to do and to see things clearly I'm going to change the workspace to the color workspace. So if I just click that, we see exactly the same information. We've applied our LUT here, the Royal Punch LUT, but now we've got better control of things like exposure. So the first thing I want to do, because I know we have an issue with this overexposure here, I'm going to try and reduce the exposure. So already you can see, wow, drastic changes there, right? This. This building looks great. This one's starting to look great. This one is, is spot on. That tree already is starting to change as well, but we still have quite a lot of saturation here. So the next thing you may want to try and do is play around with the contrast. Again, everything you do, so that has added even more punch. So I'm going to go the other way. Okay, that looks about right. Highlights. That's starting to lighten, but again, I'm losing, I'm overexposing those buildings. So maybe I want to just go down a little bit. Same thing with the shadows. You know, everything is just, I always try and go to the, to both extremes and see what that does to the image. And you get a feel for when you hit the right spot, like round about there. But I think the biggest issue here is to do with saturation. So I'm just going to go to the saturation slider here reduce that slightly say say about there so let's go back to where we were so let's switch off switch off both these changes so this is the d-log then we apply the lat but the light kind of overexposed the image and then we applied some basic correction so let's look at that in in full screen yeah, that looks about right. I'm happy with that. So with just a few tweaks, you know, it's possible to make changes to the LUT, any given LUT for that matter. And the thing with LUTs is they will have a different effect on different footage because you're applying the same color value, but to different types of footage that you would have shot. So don't expect to get exactly the same um, look each time you apply that same lat but as you've seen there are very very quick ways to make adjustments before the lat is applied and that way you're able to customize your lat even further so hope you find this video useful and um, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so and if you've watched this video and don't already own the DJI Osmo color grading lat from Osmo tips feel free to head on over to our website www.osmotips.com and download your free color grading LUT.
Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.